Thanks for it. What do you think about Jake Hooker and the Outsiders? You know, uh, Jeremy said just get up there and say amen, but y'all know I'm a preacher and I can't do that. But I want y'all to hang loose because I'm going to be brief. I, I tell you, it's incredible how God works and because the words that he put on my heart today are from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Mark this in your Bibles. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. Ephesians 5, 10. It says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. I, I'm not going to go into the whole message because I think everything that Jake has said today, the band has sung, just emphasizes just the briefness of what God's put on my heart. So a, as we think about that, I don't know about you guys, but when I read that carefully determine what pleases the Lord, I, I'm just the type of person say, okay, that makes a lot of sense, but what determines what pleases the Lord? I, I'm one of these people that I'm a little bit hard-headed, but I'm learning to be not politically correct, but I'm learning some stuff. We've had our four-year-old granddaughter this week. Now, some of you that have four-year-olds, you would say they're headstrong, strong-willed, stubborn, but Pops says she is a very determined young lady. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I need to be more determined, but I'm wanting to understand what it is that, that I need to do, what do I need to determine what pleases the Lord? I'm glad somebody asked that question because I have an answer for you. Colossians chapter 3, let's go there real quick. Three quick things, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. God's Word says this, Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in a place of honor at God's right hand. Think about things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ is who is your life is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within y'all, within me. As I was thinking about that verse, Man, I couldn't help but think of the words that Jake just shared because he just shared his testimony, which is Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 5, about where he had set his sights, about where his mind is going now and his ministry is going now and the gift that God has given him to sing and bring music. Guys, being a Christian is fun. You don't have to be in church to have fun to be a Christian. You just have to do what God has given you a gift to do and be obedient to his word and put to death those things that you know are drawing you farther away from him. You've heard me say it over and over. You've heard Jeremy say it over and over. Anything that draws us away from God is not good for us. Anything that draws us farther away from our Lord is not good for us. That's why Paul says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. First thing he says here in Colossians, set your sights. Guys, hunting season's coming up. Some of you have already pulled out your rifles. You're already sighting those things in. How come every morning we don't get up in the morning and fix our Jesus scope to where we're looking at him? It's because we get so hung up on, on the things of this world. We get so hung up sometimes on focusing on the crap that we have to deal with are the bad decisions that we make are the things that we just think we need to focus on instead of Christ. God's word says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Second thing he says is focus on heaven. I don't know about you guys, but a four-year-old has a tough time focusing. At 52, I have a tough time focusing. I'm going to steal some of Jeremy's thunder, you know, because I love doing that. <laughs> Yesterday, I was feeding, I was cleaning stalls, and my focus wasn't real good, and I fell. He's wanting to see it, it. That really made him mad. This is ugly. It hurts. But I put a hat on because y'all don't notice it as much, except for Kyle and Jeremy. They say, what happened to your head? <laughs> Guys, my focus got off for a minute. But you see, it's that quick when we take our focus off Jesus, bam, we land on our head, and you got this ugly, nasty spot. 
Not only do we have to set our sights, but we have to make sure our focus is right. But then he ends, he ends on one of those things that preachers don't like to talk about. You see, because when you come to church, you're supposed to leave here feeling good, right? But Paul says, put to death, put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. When we started 2019, 2018, and we had these banners made, there's one in the back and there's one up here on the stage, that our ministry will remain biblical, uncompromising, unapologetic, and bold that our worship is going to be raw and it's going to be real, that we'll pray with greater intensity and fasting, that we'll love people in our culture and beyond our culture the way that Jesus does, and that we'll continue to fan into flame a fire for Jesus. Man, it was great to see what God did with that in 2018, but then as 2019 rolls around and we start praying, Jeremy and I are talking about, Lord, where do we go? And, and, and that story, some of you have heard about a 180-degree turn, the pivot crop that I was parked out in West Texas. Guys, we are at a spot in our country. We are at a spot in our personal walks with Jesus where we need to carefully, carefully determine what pleases God and then be bold and be unapologetic. And some of us, need to make a 180-degree turn today. Today needs to be your pivot point. You know, I shared that message with that pivot crop. All of the life-giving water that feeds those pivot crops, that feeds those fields, that, that grows food for our country, that grows hay and all that stuff, all of that water starts in one spot, and that's the pivot. Today, your pivot point can be when the Lord Jesus Christ springs up living water in you. But it starts with setting your sights. It starts with getting your focus right. It starts with putting to death the crap that you know is drawing you farther away from God. Can you remember a time you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You know, another verse that, uh, that Jake was talking about, Romans. Romans is one of my favorite books, but Romans 6 6 through 11, the word says this, For we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. I don't know about you guys, but I like being set free from sin. Amen? I like being set free from sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we also will live with him. You see, that's our hope. That's the reality is, is we don't just have to kill the junk in our lives. When we kill that junk in our lives, it brings new life. And new life brings freedom, freedom to live in Christ. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives... He lives for the glory of God. So you, listen to this part, listen to this. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive through God and Christ Jesus. If that doesn't give us a reason to celebrate, a reason to identify what it is we need to be determined to do, then something's broke. And today is a day you need to come before God's throne because he's waiting, just as Jake was saying earlier. Man, we kept waiting on God to do something. I kept waiting on God to do something, and he was just waiting on me. I love how you said that. That's awesome because that's what he wants is for us to take that step of faith, confess him as Lord and Savior, repent of our sins, and turn and go the direction he wants us to go. Million-dollar question. Million-dollar question. What pleases the Lord? What pleases the Lord? Jeremy, come on up here. Brooke, come on up here. I know we, we do things all out of whack at Cowboy Church, but we're going to do them a little different. What pleases the Lord? God loves you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. As Jake told you, the verses from Romans where he says, if we confess him as Lord and Savior, 
you will be saved. Baptism is a picture of what happens on the inside. This morning, Miss Brooke is going to be baptized. <laughs> Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Paul says these words, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. Baptism is a living picture of an inward decision. Brooke, is it your profession of faith that you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? <laughs> Guys, that's what it's about right there. It's not the water. That's Bandera well water. That's a horse trough bought at Tractor Supply. The scorpions, no, they're not any in there this time. They're from the hill country. You know what's special about that trough? We just saw a picture of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Miss Brooke and her decision to be obedient. I'm going to ask Jake and them to do a couple more songs, if that's all right, guys. Close us out with a couple more songs, but I want you to take this opportunity to determine what pleases the Lord. Maybe today you're here, and for the first time in your life, you have finally, that light bulb came on. You know what it is you need to do. Maybe it's following baptism, just like Miss Brooke did. Maybe it's to sit right where you are, and have a conversation with Jesus Christ. Because just as Jake said, he's waiting on you. He's sitting there with his arms stretched out and said, it's finished. I did it all. I'm just waiting on you. Maybe today you need to determine how you're going to spend the rest of your life in eternity. Lay pastors are over here. Jeremy's over here. I'll be up front. Don't wait till the end of the service to find one of us. Y'all enjoy Jake as they worship the Lord again. I'm going to ask Jake to do a couple of songs, and then, Jake, if you would, close us in prayer and dismiss everybody at the end of that. God bless y'all. Thank you for being at Riding the River Cowboy Fellowship this morning. I hope you have an incredible week. God bless y'all. Jake, thank y'all so much. <laughs>